Hello everyone. Just wanted to take a few minutes and post an update. This won't be very long, but um, just wanted to kind of show you what I've been up to here the last few days. Uh, haven't done much since uh, a few days before Thanksgiving. We had my son was home uh, for Thanksgiving, and then we had um, uh, some other commitments. You know, holiday type festivities and such. A uh, couple of parties in the last week, so haven't uh, you know been able to work too much on the railroad. But anyway, I uh, wanted to start off by wishing everyone a, a preemptive Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, whatever holiday you may celebrate. I hope that is an enjoyable time. Uh, so what I've been doing, as you can see here, uh, my train has just come disconnected. So um, I have all of my rolling stock out on the layout right now. And I've just been trying to run different um, train and locomotive combinations just to make sure everything's going to work okay on this layout. Uh, so far, so good. Um, I, what I have right now is just a long boxcar train that I, I had connected to these two um, Western Pacific locos. Sorry about the sunshine there. Um, <clears throat> so uh, um, the cars are going okay. I've got some couplers I'm going to have to adjust the height on and so forth. Uh, some new cars that Probably I did not run on the old layout, so um, I'll have to get those adjusted to the height gauge. Um, what I've tried to do is kind of group the cars together on how they'll be running, uh, the rolling stock. So you can see the, the lumber train here, uh, kind of on the, on the lumber track yards, uh, the lumber yard track, sorry. Uh, so that one ran pretty well, didn't have many issues with that. Um, over here on the yard, I have one train that is primarily covered hoppers, and it's on the yard lead right now. It's too long um, as one train to fit on any of the yard tracks. Um, I have another train here that is primarily flats, uh, bulkhead flats. There's some uh, trailer on flat car flats up there, and then just some some other flats with stuff on them. So that ran well. Uh, caboose, as you can see there. Uh, got all the engines um, on the engine facility tracks. Uh, those two tracks that you see there are, are primarily for engine servicing. I have a couple of buildings out on the layout now. Um, I have a little engine house that's back in there. The church is just kind of sitting there because I don't know why it's by itself, but uh, a water tower, which I have recently painted and put together, is sitting down there. That area, the big open space to the left of the church, all the way over to where you see that Western Pacific caboose, that's going to be my town area in there. Um, so really not too much to tell. Um, I had some more difficulty with this slide-out section here. Um, and I don't know whether it's you know, humidity changes or, or whether things are just moving a bit. Um, but you can see this one screw right here that I had to insert. Um, this one rail was raised just a little bit, and it was because, I don't know if the cork has swelled a bit, maybe, you know, maybe humidity changes or something. But anyhow, what I have are adjustment pieces now. Uh, so I can run the screw either down or up to adjust that rail if I need to. Uh, likewise here, uh, this screw controls the height of the of the board in this track in this section. And likewise, I have another screw here that does the same for this track. And those look like huge gaps in there, but, you know, they're not. They, they work fine. Uh, cars run over those just, just fine. But uh, I think that's about it. Um, I don't know if I showed these. Um, at, or not before I can't remember what if those were in the in the other layout or the other update on the layout um, but have the track buffers in place now everywhere I have one left over so I don't know what I'm going to do with that but anyway uh, got one left over trying to rearrange uh, the plastic pellet facility a bit over here um, you can see where I've got the four semis you know 
backed up to the warehouse. Um, I've got to, none of this stuff is permanent yet. It's just sitting in here. Um, I have the piping here that needs to be glued down. You know, the, these silos are, are sitting in there. Um, and these other two warehouses, you know, I, I, I think I mentioned before that I like them really well. I just don't know what to do with them. Um, I've got them sitting here right now. Uh, they may stay there. They may go somewhere else. But, um, you know, I, I'm just trying to figure out what to place where. Um, I have another box of buildings somewhere that are stored under the layout. And, um, you know, I've got a lot of buildings from the other layout, and I'm not sure if all of them are going to fit. So, um, as far as next steps, I have, you know, still some issues with the foam and the cork you know, not being perfectly level everywhere on all the sections. Um, I don't know if you can, you know, it's, it's hard to see on the video, but you know, when you run trains around, you can kind of see it a bit. So, you know, I th this was a good idea <laughs> until I tried to apply it as far as putting, you know, the, the garage door insulation foam, you know, using that uh, underneath the cork. It's just not rigid enough. You know, it, it, leaves a lot of gaps. So I was thinking last night, you know, what can I do um, to try and resolve the issue of, you know, the sagging areas. Um, I have been successful in putting some supports kind of under where the track goes, um, you know, to keep it level. But my concern is that, you know, once I get started setting buildings um, in the town area, and elsewhere around the layout where there may not be a support underneath, I could have some issues, <coughs> excuse me, with, um, you know, sagging areas. So, um, I was sitting last night just kind of looking at YouTube videos and, and I thought, you know, would it be possible to insert either some Luan or some Masonite underneath the phone and uh, you know, I, I think it would be fairly easy to get the foam loose. Um, I don't know if you can, if you can tell there, there's some caulking on the front of that, um, the front of that one by two. Um, the only place that the foam is attached is wherever it hits a one by two. And, you know, there's some fairly big areas, um, that are held up by that. So my thought is, can I just... Can I break that loose and then slide either some Luan or some Masonite underneath that and, you know, then um, either with nails, you know, uh, using my nail gun from the top down, attach the Masonite to the one by twos, um, or it might be, um, you know, that I could screw from the bottom up into the Masonite, you know, with some two inch screws or something. but. Anyway, that's kind of my, my thought process right now. Um, you know, it's, I, I sure as heck don't want to tear down the layout just to put some supports underneath. Um, you know, the alternative way, and, and the reason I, I say break the foam loose is I'm talking about using larger pieces of masonite to slide in there. Like, you know, that what we're looking at right now, that one by two is about three feet long, you know, cut a piece of masonite that's three feet by three feet and slide it in there. Um, alternatively, what I could do is I could cut masonite that uh, is a little bit smaller but fits within the existing structure. And I'm going to try and slide over here and show you what I'm talking about. So we can see, you can see where the one by twos are there. You know, so that's a pretty big area. Um, cut a piece of masonite that will fit inside those one by twos and, and what you're looking at there in the center of the screen is a support that's just kind of sitting in there to hold things up. Um, obviously I'd take that out, um, cut a piece of masonite that would fit inside the one by twos and then put it up there and add some bracing underneath and attach it that way. Um, I think that may ultimately be the way I go only because it's going to be less destructive. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned that if I get started trying to pry foam loose, 
that some of it's going to stick and some of it's going to come loose and I'm going to be left with chunks of foam that are missing. Um, so anyway, you know, that's kind of a long-term thing. Um, right now, the, the operation of the layout is not really hampered um, by this situation. But again, as I begin to place buildings and structures and such, I'm afraid it's going to cause a problem. So a uh, couple of ideas there, you know, if you all can think of any other methods that I might use, um, I would appreciate that. So uh, I guess that's about it. I probably won't post again um, until after the first of the year, um, you know, with Christmas coming up soon and other commitments, you know, don't know how much work I'll, I'll get done. I have been enjoying running trains, though. Uh, so that's been fun. Um, I uh, don't have the fascia on here yet, obviously. And I, I'm kind of waiting um, till I have my, my daughter has a, um, a, uh, a huge van that she hauls herself and the kids around in. Um, and she had a, uh, she was involved in an accident. It wasn't her fault. And she, she nor the kids were hurt, but it kind of messed up the car quite a bit. Um, they got hit by a, by a fella who wasn't paying attention. So, um, the van's in the shop. It's probably going to be done in a week or so. Um, once that's done, I'll be able to go grab some masonite and do the fascia at least. Um, you know, by then, hopefully I'll have this sagging uh, dilemma figured out uh, and I can go, you know, grab whatever other supplies I need, you know, at that time too. Um, so uh, installing the fascia is holding up, um, hold, holding me up from finishing the wiring. You know, each one of these yard tracks I have isolated, and you can see the white wires hanging down there right now. Um, those are all of the um, the connections for the powered side of the rail. The the rail that's um, what do I what do I mean powered? Um, you know, it's it doesn't have an, an insulated rail joiner on that side. Um, so what I want to do is get the fascia in, figure out where the switches are going to be located and then I'll put the other lead the red lead on there and solder it and then you know run it to the switch and so forth so anyway um, kind of had a standstill with them um, you know kind of kind of getting the rest of the wiring done um, but anyway so I'm rambling uh, have a have a Merry Christmas everyone happy holidays and uh, I'll talk to you after the first of the year take care everyone